Well, today on Nation, we're talking about buying and selling a company. So if you have bought or you haven't bought or you're thinking about it or not, either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is going on? If it's your first time here, it's a heck of an episode. Maybe you're buying a company. Maybe you are starting a company. But it should be a good episode. Go back and follow up. We have weeks and weeks. I mean, literally 200 plus episodes of uh, WCR Nation. And some of them are even halfway listenable. Yeah. So go back and watch uh, all of that. Uh, but if you didn't know, I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. So if you're looking for a guy, Somebody to be your supply guy, that's me. Uh, my number is 862-312-2026. That's my cell phone. So you can text me, call me, whatever. Just text me and be like, yo, Jersey, your nose is crooked. But I have an order in my cart. Go ahead and put that through. And uh, if you're logged in, it saves it. I can run that. And uh, I get credit. Cost you nothing extra. And it's like an awesome virtual high five. And then you also have a guy. Then you have someone. Again, 862-312-2026 plus. Let me know and you'll get like a super cool sticker. By the way, uh, I realized that the uh, office actually had found some other stickers because they ordered like a trunk full of them. So you may not have gotten the new ones yet, but I think we just ran out. So if you haven't gotten it, the new one's right there. And I can't see it on that side. But anyway, if you want any of these awesome stickers that are behind me, all you need to do is go to awcmag.com. If you're not watching on YouTube, uh, then you can't see. But my sticker wall is on fleek, as the kids may say. But no, American Window Cleaner Magazine is where these stickers all come from. Uh, every single issue gets a full, complete sticker sheet in the front. Plus, it's got tons of articles and uh, pictures and everything. This is the latest one, the tattoo issue. A ton of awesome tattoos by uh, window cleaners that are of window cleaning stuff. Anyway, get that, get the stickers, be cool, awcmag.com, and subscribe if you have it. It's literally delivered to your door. Get it. All right. So today, we're talking about buying and selling a company. Now, buying and selling is kind of the same, right? All these kind of principles sort of work for buying and selling. Uh, in my life, I've bought in about... Mm, but like six, six or seven companies. Now, mind you, they're not all these giant companies. They're not uh, a giant, huge companies. Uh, I've bought six or seven and I've sold two. So I've done both ways. And it all has to do on what side you're on, right? When you're buying a car or selling a car, the price depends on what side you're on. You want the lowest price if you're buying, but you want the highest price if you're selling, right? It's kind of that same concept. So both of these, buying and selling, can kind of be done with the same kind of ideas, but then you actually can make it go either way. Um, so they're kind of the same, if that makes sense. I may do a two-part or I may do just selling later, but this is kind of all focused on buying because more of us will buy than sell. We usually only sell one time. I moved states, started another little company and sold, and it was a little company uh, at that point. So it's like a year old. It wasn't uh, anything to write home about. But uh, in buying, you're going to have a lot more buying than you are going to be selling. Now, if you see a company out there that you think they're going out or their owner is old or I just had somebody call me the other day about uh, an owner passing away, if you have that happening... Um, you have to be tactful, but make sure to let them know that you want to buy the company. Just let them know. Say, hey, I'd really be interested in that. Um, I would love to sit down and talk. And there's a lot of things you can kind of talk about to figure out what it is that uh, the numbers work and everything like that. The biggest thing in buying a company is excitement. Excitement will ruin the deal. It will ruin numbers either way. If they're really excited, like, oh my gosh, I may be able to get rid of this thing, right? They're going to more than likely take less than they should. And if you're really excited, like, man, this is going to increase my bottom dollar, 
then your excitement is going to probably have you pay more than you should. But here's some things to focus on when you're buying a company. By the way, if you've bought in companies before, comment on YouTube. Uh, give the video the thumbs up, all that fun stuff. Uh, subscribe if you want. It doesn't matter. But comment on the video. That really does help us out, at least me. Um, but first and foremost, you have to value the company, right? You can go and uh, have an actual company come in and value it, and that's fine. But remember, we're talking about sales of companies that usually don't have a lot of lawyers and businesses and, and um, uh, consultation in the sale, usually. Uh, when you're buying a window cleaning company, it could be anywhere from $5,000, you know, all the way up to maybe $100,000. Anything over $100,000, you're really going to do get more lawyers involved and that type of thing. So we're not really talking about that as much. But a lot of times it's just buying a route, right? But you have to find out what the heck the thing is worth. If you don't know what it's worth, just like bids, you're going to throw a number out. That's always happens when you have these big projects. Your first big project, 20 building condo complex. You're like, oh man, this is going to be a, a $20,000 job. Until you start breaking it down and you're like, oh no, it's going to be like $6,200, right? You always throw out these even sexy numbers. So that's what happens when it comes to um, window cleaning, buying a window cleaning company. Same thing. You end up getting somebody go, oh, what do you think you're going to want for that? I don't know, 50000 They just throw out a number. Nobody knows anything. They just throw a number out. But the real thing is you have to value the company. Because if you gave me $50,000 for a company that is only really worth 30000 you just wasted $20,000. It's going to take longer to recoup that. It didn't make sense, and it wasn't a good viable option. You have to value it. How you value it is you have to take their actual income from the company. A lot of times people go, well, my company does $100,000 a year, so I don't know, $250,000 I'd sell it for? Good flipping luck. You're not selling it for that. You're just not. So what you have to do is go and value that company. Take it. Find out what they make. They may make $100,000, but guess what? I want to see the tax records. I want to see two years of statements on this. Well, it looks like two years ago, you took $23,000 from the company. Last year, you did $48,000 from the company. That's what you're focused on. I don't care that you did $100,000. I don't care any of that stuff, right? And then there's growth. Certain growth in certain projects is looking at the big numbers. If you went from $20,000 one year to $50,000 the next year, now I'm talking about what you paid yourself, how did it go from that? Well, if you could have paid yourself $50,000, you would have the first year. So what happened? Was it just growth of like we brought on like you know 500 new customers or was it one big one? Or was it, hey, that first year we bought all the equipment and this year I didn't buy anything, right? Numbers, there's a reason for numbers. Math is really, as much as I don't like math, remember math is a, a uh, universal thing. Like one plus one is always two. So numbers always speak. It's not opinion. It's none of that, right? So we got to find out why you went from one to the other, right? If there's nothing major in that, now you all of a sudden you know this company can give me $50,000 a year, Okay. That's what we're working on. It doesn't matter. You could be a million dollar company, but if you're only making a profit of 50000 and you're only paying yourself 50000 then that's your value of the company. You have to find out what it is that you're buying. You have to value it from what it is. Now, in that value, there's things like equipment. What equipment are you getting? Equipment should never be in the value of it. That should be on a separate thing. So we'll jump off that bridge in a little bit. Other than that, what are you buying? You're really, really in window cleaning buying a list because a lot of us aren't running contracts. If we do have route, route is more valuable than houses. A house, they may only get it done once a year. They don't know when they're going to get it done. If you ran your company to be sold in the beginning, maybe you're getting everybody is booked. You know, Every time we do it, we, we leave a job site, they're booked for the next appointment. That's awesome. But it's not guaranteed, right? Storefronts is also not guaranteed, but more than likely, if you're doing that storefront, it's automatic, it's on your schedule, you know that you're going to get X amount, you're actually going to get something, right? 
So there's different values. Commercial stuff is also hard. How many of your jobs are uh, construction cleaning? Maybe you had a really good year of construction cleaning. Those are not repeat jobs. Those should not count towards the total of your new one. They just shouldn't. You're not going to receive any income from that. So why am I paying you for that? Again, dive in and find out what it is that you're buying, right? That is the big, big part. Also, something to always, always, always look at is, is are, your, are their expenses really their expenses? Are they what they should be? Now, what I'm talking about here is if you look at a company that's in growth mode, they got old stuff, old gear, you're going to have to buy new things, but they haven't bought anything in a while. He just doesn't want to do it anymore. He's old. He just kind of has the... Did they do the expenses they should have? Maybe he made $50,000, but he didn't pay taxes. Or maybe he made $50,000, but he hasn't bought a supply order in a year, right? You have to adjust that from what needs to be expensed and what didn't get expensed. Expenses are different year to year. You have a growth year, your expenses are huge. You have a cruise year, your expenses are not as huge. So you have to actually dive into that. The big problem is people do, and this is on a side note here, but people call me and they'll be like, hey, I'm looking at buying this company. Can you help me? Yeah. What should I pay him? Hmm? Uh, he does uh, $28,000 worth of route work. What should I pay him? What? That's that. There's so many, many, many things. That's like saying, hey, I'm buying a car. What car should I get? Or what? how much should I pay for a car? What? What car, what kind, four-door, two-door, new, used, mileage, condition? There's so many things, right? There's so many things. But in business, unfortunately, people think it's just like this cut and dry thing. I'd give them this, like the 30% doing complete. That's a great number and a great figure to work off if everything lines up, right? Anyway, back to it. Sidetracked. If you're looking at buying a company, understand what you're buying. That's the big part. Value it. Understand what it is that you're getting, right? And expenses need to be what they are. If you do not have expenses to where they are, you know they're still there. Expenses are still there, right? Now, bringing on an account or a, a, a business changes the expenses for somebody. So say uh, we'll use in this uh, example, his name is, uh, we'll say George. George is selling his company for whatever the price we're figuring out. But he does $100,000 a year in work. Some of that route, some of that residential. Great. What does George work out of? Well, he works out of a uh, SUV. It's his personal SUV. He puts magnets on. Okay. Um, so does George work out of a house or does he have a, an office? He works out of his house. Okay. So does George do the work or does George have employees? George does the work himself. All right. So as you're finding this down, say you have a company, multiple employees, you have a location, that all has to be absorbed. George wasn't paying for electric or internet or the insurance on his truck, not his personal truck, but on work trucks, he doesn't have... You know, all that payments on the work trucks. He doesn't have... There's so many things that to get this and use it under yours, you now have to spend, right? If you buy a company, we're just using even numbers here, but if you buy a company doing $100,000, $50,000 in gross, uh, or in net, we'll say, just again, that would be amazing numbers, and you bought it for $50,000, that means after that first year, you would break even. Wrong. If you're absorbing that company... Now you have to pay someone to do the work. If George was doing it himself, now all of a sudden you have that payment. They're also in a work truck. You have that payment. That truck has a bunch of stuff. Plus it's now under your... You see where that is? That job that you thought you were going to get the money back for right away is so much more expensive than you thought. You have to understand the expenses that you will have versus what he has. There's a lot of us out there who are just uh, one-man shows. Cool. Awesome. High five. You're making a dollar. But the company is not as valuable as a company who has multiple employees, a location, all that fun stuff. And the reason is just that. You're the employee, but you're also the HR. You're also the every, you're every employee that that company needs. And now you're not there. 
So that company has zero employees, but a bunch of work, right? So was the owner an employee? That's what you need to, to, to find out. If the owner was an employee, and all of a sudden that $50,000, say, again, even numbers, he did 40 hours a week, made $50,000. Now you're taking that on. Cool. Are you going to make $50,000? No, not even close. Because now you have to hire Steve to do the work. Now all of a sudden you have payroll. What's your payroll compared? Maybe, again, stupid even numbers, maybe you're paying that guy $40,000. Okay? So $40,000 for the guy to do the work. You're making a total profit of $50,000. It's only $10,000 a year. That's less than $1,000 a month you're going to profit on that business. Now, if you just went, $1,000 a month, did I say that? Yeah. If you just went and bought that company, oh man, he's doing $100,000. I gave him $120,000 for that company. Yeah. I'm making payments, right? We'll talk about payments in a second, but say you're doing payments and uh, payments on $100,000. We'll do, I'm going to do this math real quick. If you're watching on YouTube, you can just stare at my my receding hairline here. Um, one second. All right, so one hundred thousand dollars. We're gonna say uh, at five uh, percent. Uh, you know what? We'll make it easy. Ten years. Uh, thousand dollars divided by ten equals divided by. Oops. Divided by ten divided by. You're kidding me, right? Hundred thousand dollars divided by ten, so ten years, uh, and then you're doing that times twelve months. It's an eight hundred and thirty-three dollar payment. It took so much longer than I should have. I should have known that in my head. Pretend that didn't happen. All right, if you're buying a hundred thousand dollar company in a ten-year buyout, which is that's an incredibly long buyout, but say you financed it, you're paying eight hundred and thirty-three dollars a month. Ten years. Ten years is a long time. You're more than likely going to be doing that in um, five years or less on a buyout like that. So, you know, putting those numbers, all of a sudden now you're making sense. It just doesn't make sense to spend $1,666 a month for five years on a company that is bringing you in less than $1,000 a month. If you're only doing $10,000. It's $833. You're earning $833. If you did a 10-year loan, you're spending $833. That means now you just got all this new work, super awesome, and you won't make profit for 10 years. 10 years, by the way. Uh, or if you have a five-year loan, now you're losing $833 every single month to have that. That company's doing $100,000 a year. And is losing $833 a month. Understand, when you break the numbers, you break the idea of what you're actually getting. Excitement goes, man, $100,000, I love $100,000, extra $100,000 a year, yeah! Wrong. You're profiting $1,000, $833 a month, if you didn't finance it at all. That's all you're going to profit, no matter how much you buy the company for. So now... You look at it and go, okay, you're doing $100,000, right? But you're the owner-operator. Now I'm going to pay you X amount on that, right? What's your payoff going to be? That is what it's all based on, right? So at 800, uh, whatever, $833, it ends up being $10,000 if you made payments of that profit for one year. So say I said, hey, I will give you profits for the next year on this $100,000 company that equates to $10,000. See, people think when they have their company that blood, sweat, and tears is equity. It's not. I don't care if you had blood, sweat, and tears. I don't care if you worked harder than anybody else. I don't care. and I don't give two dumps because I'm not buying your experience. I'm not buying your learned lessons. I'm not buying any of that. I'm buying numbers. I'm buying profit and customers. Now, on top of all that profit and customers, you're going to lose some of them. You're just going to lose them. 
in a transition, people go, oh, uh, Steve's not doing him anymore. George, whatever his name was that I made up. George isn't, no, no, actually we merged. We took this over and uh, we'll be taking, oh, God. Well, you know, I kind of uh, kind of was doing it. I really like George, you know, so we're going to look around. You're going to lose 20% of the people. You're going to. Understand that the numbers that they were charging may not be your numbers. You may force out people. You don't even want to force them out. Now, all of a sudden, you look at that company and go, okay, how much was this job? Give me one, give me five jobs. I usually do three or five. But give me five jobs, what you charge, where they are, close to me. I'm going to go look at them. Just drive by. Look at that job. And go, okay, well, he's about uh, 30% less than me. So that's what I would charge. Now, when you get that job to make everything happy, you'd have to increase that by 30% to get it back to where you need to so that all your jobs are making the same. You're going to lose people that way. Now, all of a sudden, your profit of $50,000 paid to the person who's doing the work. Now it's down to $10,000 profit for the whole year. And you just lost $10,000 worth of yearly work. You just killed your profit. You have zero profit. You're buying a $100,000 company that is going to make you zero dollars. See, the part that people don't think about is they look at the outside, right? They look at that bid and they go, man, this job, if I get this condo, it's going to be like 20 grand. They don't look at everything that it goes with. In a company, you don't necessarily look at everything until you break it down. Buying a company understands. Now, if those numbers worked out and say I could get a $100,000 company, right? He was an owner occupied, work those numbers. I could feasibly understand that I would pay him a due on completion, which we'll talk about in a second. But I could feasibly say I'll give you a year's worth of gross profits on that, right? Now, this is where you say two and a half years, things like that, people will pay. I'm not necessarily going to go that high because in two and a half years of making $10,000 profit to pay that investment back, after two years and seven months, now you can start earning that whopping $1,000 or you turn in $33 a month. Right? So two plus years, I'll have something. And in that amount of time, a lot of people can leave in two and a half years. Right? So understand this, where you're going kind of on that side of it. Right? Is there pressure to sell? Is the person in a health crisis or family crisis or something? Is there something they need to get rid of it? Because if they need to push you fast, then there may be some leeway both ways. Right? Keep that in mind. But the big thing in company, now we've talked about profit, we've talked about valuing the company, we've talked about all of that. The one thing you have to understand is liability. Now, in a sale or purchase, there's liability. And liability basically means this. Now, I sold my company to somebody who had a four-year payoff, right? They paid me for four years. And the reason was, I knew the guy, he was an operations officer, it was great, uh, he didn't have the down payment money. Um, the four years work, there was an interest rate on that. Um, but with that, the payments were small enough that it didn't encroach for him. It was like having an employee. And it also covered the down payment, basically, and then all that fun stuff. But for four years, I took the liability. Now, yes, there was a legal contract. There was everything else. But listen... After two months, three months, five months, six months, I have now moved to North Carolina. Six months go by, and he goes, yeah, I just, ah, it's not for me. He paid for six months, took all the money for six months, did, more than likely, destroy the integrity of the company, because now it's his, right? So he's not doing it the way I am. The growth numbers may have changed. Maybe he did really good. Maybe he's giving over a better company. If he was, he wouldn't be stopping. But for four years, I took the liability. Now, if you're anything about poker, you know about poker. There's something called pot committed, right? Basically, there's a certain point where it doesn't make sense to back out of something. You have to play it out. It costs you less money to possibly get something than the money you're guaranteed to lose. So we'll say after two years, they're pot committed. So in a four-year buyout deal, I have two years of all the liability. The next two years still have liability, into the third year, it's pretty secure. Because at that point, he's like, dude, I paid for three years, man. I just paid for another year and I'm done. 
It's mine, all mine. In a purchase contract, if the payments ever stop, you get the entire company back, right? Depends on how you structure it. Talk to a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer. But who takes the liability? Now, there are a few different things or ways you can do it. And well, this is liability. You can lump sum pay, which I know guys who've sold companies, somebody came in and go, what do you need? What do you want? Here's a check. Goodbye. Lump sum payments, which we just talked about, and due on completion, which is another one. Those are the three. And it changes liability. Now, lump sum, biggest liability of anything. The biggest liability is held by the person who's writing the check, right? Because he's getting this uh, company that in a year may not exist because the other guy may have trashed it. You don't know. None of the jobs came over. Maybe the numbers didn't work out. Maybe he was padding the books. It doesn't matter. He's taking all of the liability. So a lump sum deal. If I said, hey, you right now, how much do you want for your company? I'm going to give you a dirt cheap number. I'm going to say, okay, for that $100,000 company, my profit's on it. It's 10 grand for the entire year. I'm going to give you three months profit. So 833 times three, right? That's my lump sum to buy your company. 2,500 bucks. I'm going to buy you $2,500 and I'm going to let you get out of working. Now for you, we, oh man, well, 2,500 bucks for a hundred thousand dollar company doesn't much make sense. That makes a lot of sense. But the thing is, is what you're doing in your brain is like, oh, my hourly rate that I was making for doing the work comes into play, right? Well, I make more than that doing the work. Okay. Well, that's the other thing is, is that we're giving the liability to him. Now, if you said, well, I want more money, then you take liability. More liability you take back, the less or the more money you'll make. So now all of a sudden, say you're doing due on completion. That's the next step. Or uh, we'll say payments. Uh, payments is the next step, technically. Payments mean, okay, I want for my company, I know you're going to have profits of X amount. I want the profits for two years. They're going to say, of course, no, that doesn't make much sense. Well, if they don't really need the company or they're not bidding on excitement, I'll give you uh, 12 months of profits for that. So that means for 12 months, I'm going to pay you $833 every single month. Boom, 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 boom. That means that I don't have to come up with the equity all at once, which takes some liability over. That means the company is still there for those 12 months. In those 12 months, if I remember like, this is dumb, the company doesn't work, I back out, you get the company back. You're taking the liability back off the guy writing the check, right? Now all of a sudden, you go from your 2,500, you just went up to $10,000. You're getting $10,000 for a $100,000 company. Now you say, okay, I want more money than that. Oh, great. Take more liability. How do you do that? Now, all of a sudden, you're a due on completion sale. A due on completion sale means I'm going to pay you X amount due on completion. Okay? So, for 12 months or 24, depending on how you're worrying or working the deal, say 12 months, I'll pay you 30% of every job we have for 12 months. Now, what that does is it takes all of the liability and puts it on the person getting the money. Because here's the thing. We know, in simple numbers, again, if I have a company that comes in, I have expenses and everything else, but with profits, I should be able to tighten things up enough to make 10% or 30% or 50% of that money, right? Once you know your percentage on the job, you can then pay them. Now, even if you're spending a little bit more money profit-wise, you're giving them a liability. And the thing is, is that if you, if I said to you, hey, I want to give you this job, uh, this uh, referral, service magic thing. I'll give you this name and number. you got to pay me 25 bucks. You're going to be like, all uh, right, I'll do it 10. Okay, here's a name and number. If I said, hey, you watching or listening right now, I'm going to give you this job. They're guaranteed. They want it. They, they, all you got to do is just set it up. I'm going to subcontract it to you. Sweet. I want 100 bucks for it. It's a $500 job. Yeah, heck yeah. Because it's done, right? There's no liability. You're getting the job. It's worth it. Or you say, hey, when you're done with the job, give me 100 bucks of it. You're more than likely going to be like, yeah. So that's where taking the liability is. Now all of a sudden that if all of the jobs that are supposed to happen in January happen, 
he gets all the money. But if something crazy happens, everybody goes, oh, no, I'm not doing that. The prices change. You know, they're dropping. All of a sudden, all my commercial customers leave me. Somebody else gets wind, and they're poaching all my stuff. Now, all of a sudden, if after a month or two that company, I'm doing 50%, the guy who sold the company is only getting 50% of the profits that he would have. I'm not paying him for the hopes that it's going to do well. I'm paying him for it actually doing well. Remember, who takes liability? In my last or bigger sale, the the sale happened because I took all the liability. So I had interest on it and I got a great, a great price for it because I was holding liability for four years, right? So understand, you got to value a company, figure out what it's worth, what are you buying, figure out your expenses, figure out your profits, and you also have to figure out the liability. Depending on how you structure it is better. Now, the biggest thing that you can do if you are trying to sell your company is sell it to one of your employees. They already know what it's doing. They all of a sudden one day make a bunch more money. But either way, buying and selling companies, relatively simple. I know this was a little bit more confusing. If you ever got questions, let me know, but uh, break it down. It, there's a lot of things in there. Get all the information you can on it. Get actual verifiable information, not like, oh, here's my QuickBooks, right? Get multiple years. So you can see the transition. A year ago, they weren't trying to pad their books because they were selling it. This month, they might have had a really good month because they're making it look like they had a really good month. So do your due diligence. It's not super hard to do, but uh, go buy a company. Why not, right? Uh, but again, thanks for watching. If you don't know, I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. All of the awesomest stuff in the world. The greatest window cleaning supply company in all of the, the globe will go that way. Uh, if you want a rep, which I know you do, let me be your rep. 862 312-2026. Save that number. Save it. My name is Jersey. You like the state. It's easy. I'm the only Jersey in your phone. Save it in there. Let me know when you have an order. Put it all in your cart or just text me and be like, yo, I need this, 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 and this. Thanks. I'll verify an address and you're good to go. So it's super, super easy. Again, be an epic cool kid. I'm telling you, if you're listening or watching, please get the American Window Cleaner magazine. I want to get as many people subscribed as possible. It is absolutely a phenomenal magazine, if I say so myself. And you get some super awesome stickers. So definitely do that. I really appreciate it from everybody. Uh, if there's anything I can do for you, let me know. But either way, go buy a company. But more importantly, until next week, go out there and be epic.